I awake in thy light, I awake in thy light, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy light, I awake in thy light, I awake in thy light, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy light, I awake in thy love, I awake in thy love, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy love. I awake in thy love, I awake in thy love. I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy love. I awake in thy joy, I awake in thy joy. I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy joy. I awake in thy joy, I awake in thy joy. I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy joy. I awake in thy light, I awake in thy light. I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy light. I awake in thy light, I awake in thy light. I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy light. I awake in thy love, I awake in thy love, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy love, I awake in thy love, I awake in thy love, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy love. I awake in thy joy, I awake in thy joy, I am joyful, I am free, I awake in thy joy, I awake in thy joy, I awake if you fall flat on your nose, get up and say, I'm going to keep on trying, because you are not anything but the divine image within you. And so if you can, with affirmation, bring yourself to that point where all your energy is going in one direction and isn't paralyzed either with restlessness and other desires and things that siphon your energy off in other ways, or paralyzed with the thought that, well, this isn't me. All the spiritual path, in a sense, is convincing yourself that it is you. But you'll find that it only happens as you allow him to filter into the picture, too. You can't do it on your own. People who do it on their own and don't introduce this new understanding constantly into the picture never understand. You can't, in other words, hypnotize somebody and tell him you're a saint and have him really be a saint. He may believe it, but it won't work. It's got to be the other side, too, and the other side in the last analysis is everything. All we've really done, in a sense, is get ourselves out of the way so that that can happen. All we've really done is open apart, pull apart the curtains, draw apart the curtains so that the sunlight can come in. But we've got to do that much. The sun isn't going to burst its way through those curtains. You have to do that work. So affirmation and prayer and knowing, you, you have to know God's will by attuning yourself to it, by listening, <clears throat> by being willing to do anything that God wants, and at the same time, put yourself behind whatever you do. Enthusiasm is one of the most important and wonderful qualities. And that's again where Master's teaching, the greater the will, or in this context, the willingness, or, again, even further, the enthusiasm, because enthusiasm is just intense willingness. Willingness alone might be even considered a bit passive, but you, with enthusiasm, be willing in a positive, joyful, creative way, then you'll find that, that uh, nothing can stop you. People, being usually low energy, are afraid to put out enthusiasm. They're afraid to... Um, to be dynamic. They're afraid of the call on their energy exhausting them. But the truth of it is that when we put out energy, we draw on energy. If we put it out from a divine, uh, in a divine consciousness, if we do it for God, with God, rather than, oh, I've got to do it, and you're fighting yourself all the way, you've really exhausted yourself just because you've fought yourself, not because you've done that work. But where is that, where is that willingness? And where that willingness or enthusiasm is in tune with the divine, then you'll find that there is just about nothing that you can't do.
Now we'll hear a wonderful story from the autobiography of a yogi. It's about three minutes long. You are too thin, Mukunda. His remark struck a sensitive point, that my sunken eyes and emaciated appearance were far from my liking, was testified to by rows of tonics in my room at Calcutta. Nothing availed. Chronic dyspepsia had pursued me since childhood. My despair reached, reached an occasional zenith when I asked myself if it were worth while to carry on this life with a body so unsound. Medicines have limitations. The creative life force has none. Believe that, you shall be well and strong. Sri Yukteswar's words aroused a conviction of personally applicable truth which no other healer, and I had tried many, had been able to summon within me. Day by day, behold, I waxed. Two weeks after Master's hidden blessing, I had accumulated the invigorating weight which el eluded me in the past. My persistent stomach ailments vanished with a lifelong permanency. On later occasions I witnessed my guru's instantaneous divine healings of persons suffering from ominous disease, tuberculosis, diabetes, epilepsy, or paralysis. Not one could have been more grateful for his cure than I was at sudden freedom from my cadaverous aspect. Years ago, I too was anxious to put on weight, Sri Yukteswar told me. During convalescence, after a severe illness, I visited Lahiri Mahashai in Benares. Sir, I have been very sick and lost many pounds. I see, Yukteswar, you made yourself unwell, and now you think you are thin. This reply was far from the one I had expected. My guru, however, added encouragingly, Let me see, I am sure you ought to feel better tomorrow. Taking his words as a gesture of secret healing toward my receptive mind, I was not surprised the next morning at a welcome accession of strength. I sought out my master and exclaimed exultingly, Sir, I feel much better today. Indeed, today you invigorate yourself. No, Master, I protested. It was you who helped me. This is the first time in weeks that I have had any energy. Oh, yes, your malady has been quite serious. Your body is frail yet. Who can say how it will be tomorrow? The thought of possible return of my weakness brought me a shudder of cold fear. The following morning I could hardly drag myself to Larry Marchais' home. Sir, I, I am ailing again. My guru's glance was quizzical. So, once more you indispose yourself. Gurudeva, I realize now that day by day you have been ridiculing me. My patience was exhausted. I don't understand why you disbelieve my truthful reports. Really, it has been your thoughts that have made you feel alternately weak and strong. My master looked at me affectionately. You have seen how your health has exactly followed your expectations. Thought is a force, even as electricity or gravitation. The human mind is a spark of the almighty consciousness of God. I could show you that whatever your powerful mind believes very intensely would instantly come to pass. Knowing that Lahiri Mohoshai never spoke idly, I addressed him with great awe and gratitude. Master, if I think I am well and have regained my former weight, shall that happen? It is so even at this moment. My guru spoke gravely, his gaze concentrated on my eyes. Lo, I felt an increase not alone of strength, but of weight. Lahiri Mahashai retreated into silence. After a few hours at his feet, I returned to my mother's home, where I stayed during my visits to Benares. My son, what is the matter? Are, are you swelling with dropsy? 
Mother could hardly believe her eyes. My body was now of the same robust dimensions it had possessed before my illness. I weighed myself and found that in one day I had gained fifty pounds. They remained with me permanently. Friends and acquaintances who had seen my thin figure were aghast with wonderment. A number of them changed their mode of life and became disciples of Lahiri Mohashai as a result of this miracle. What a great story. When you think about the power of thought, the power of our thoughts, the power of the thoughts of the guru that can invigorate you. And that story shows a disciple was open and the guru could help him to change his level of consciousness and his thoughts and his whole body until he became well and gained 50 pounds in one day. That's an amazing story and so inspiring for all of us to realize every thought we put out, it's like an, an energy that goes out and it's creating, it's creating something that we are or something that we, we need, a situation, our health, our, our body, how we look, how we feel, our success, our prosperity, everything is created by our thoughts. And if our thoughts are uplifted and positive and super conscious, we create a whole nother world, no matter what's going on around us. So I wanted to play that story for you. So you keep that in mind that your thoughts, thoughts are things. Master called them thought bombs. You put that thought out and it's going out and it's exploding. And so for all of us, keep it in mind as devotees, we want to keep our thoughts uplifted, inspired, uh, super conscious as much as possible. And from, uh, I've got this quote from online from the internet on uh, negative thoughts to read to you. Negative attitudes and feelings of helplessness and hopelessness can create chronic stress, which upsets the body's hormone balance, depletes the brain chemicals required for happiness, and mat damages the immune system. Chronic stress can actually decrease our lifespan. Another thing I found that's just wonderful that Yale University, you probably know, has a happiness course that they started in 2018. In 2000, they said that it's the most popular class in the past 300 years. What an incredible thought that is. In April 2019, they had 22,000 students. In April 2020, they had 860,000 students and the number just keeps going up because people are looking for a way to be happy, a way to be fulfilled, a way to get control of their energy, their emotions, a way to uplift themselves. Our whole way of life is affirmative. And I hope that that's clear in your mind. Everything we do is affirmative. It's a positive affirmation. And everything that mass, all master's techniques are affirmative. So we have uh, our energization, that's affirming positive energy flowing through our bodies. And in our yoga postures, we have affirmations that we say to bring energy up to the mind as well as to the body. We have the super conscious living exercises. I'm awake and ready. I'm positive, energetic, enthusiastic. And then we have affirmations on their own, which I, I'm going to do one with you today. And then we have the chants. I awaken thy light or uh, from joy I came for joy I live, joy, joy, ever new joy. Uh, uh, no birth, no death, no caste have I, father, mother have I none. I am he, I am he. Everything we do is heading towards that total affirmation of bliss, that I am one with God, that spark of joy of bliss is in my soul. It's, and that's who and what I really am. And in Master's life, you could see how he demonstrated that. He just lived it. He exuded it. He was so magnetic and so positive all the time. He would run out onto the platform to give his talks. 
and he would shout out to the audience, how feels everybody? How is everybody? And he would have people shouting back to him, awake and ready, awake and ready. And he said he didn't want to start his talks until he could get that affirmative energy going from the audience. And his temple in Encinitas fell into the Pacific Ocean from erosion. Beautiful temple. He loved that temple. It was so nice for him to be able to be there. He could write, he could be in that temple. And what he said was, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, my temple, my temple. But he was always looking for the positive, affirming life, affirming God, affirming freedom, affirming the soul. And for his disciples, he was the same. As you know, um, well, there was one man who was jinxed. He wasn't a disciple, he was a brother of disciple. And master told him, you jinxed yourself. And he helped him, he de-jinxed him. But think about it, you're jinxing yourself by the thoughts that you have, by the music you listen to, by the company that you keep, you're getting jinxed. And so, and then there's a time when Ma Swamiji was walking by master, you probably heard the story many times and master asked him, well, how are you, Walter? He called him Walter. And, and Swamiji was, you know, and people are a little bit up low. He said, well, the master said, that's good. He just wanted to stop him, stop that negative thought, stop it right there. And one man master would just come to him and say, come out of that body, come out. He wanted to just shake him from the delusion that I'm my worries, I'm my problems, I'm my fears, I'm my delusions, I'm my emotions that that's not who and what you are. As Swamiji called them a bundle, you're a bundle of self-definitions and you take those things away and I awaken thy light. That's what happens. And in Swamiji's life, he demonstrated it so beautifully as well. He was at one time, he, he lost the temple as well at Ananda village in the meditation retreat. And he felt Divine Mother's blessing so deeply in his heart that he said, why don't you take all the buildings then if, if this is what I'm going to feel from you? So she was pleased with him. And he went to the local store, he was buying something and uh, right there at the, near the community and he was singing a song. And the lady who owned the store there said, well, my God, you're singing, didn't you just lose your temple? And he said, I lost the temple, I didn't lose my voice. And uh, what a beautiful attitude. We have to always be thinking, what is trying to happen in this situation that's helping me, that's, that's positive and keeping our energy uplifted. That's, it's a battle every day, but we have to fight that battle. Another time the devotees were going skiing and you've heard this story probably from Devi Ji and she was in the car with Swamiji and the other ones. And then they were up in the snow area and the tires were bald and the car started swerving around, turning around, turning around, around. And then it ran into a big bus and the car was finished and the bus didn't have a dent. This what they said. And afterwards, uh, Swamiji, everyone was fine. Nobody was hurt. So they got out. They did what they had to do, you know, with the uh, car and the insurance and everything. And, and then Swamiji says, look. That bus is going just exactly where we want it to go. Let's get on the bus. And they said, well, all right, let's get on the bus. So they get on the bus and, and uh, they were just a happy group. And, and one person said, well, isn't that your car over there? And aren't you unhappy about your car being crashed? And, and Swamiji said, I would be happy in two weeks. Why can't I be happy right now? And that's the point, be happy now. And if you can get that attitude that there's some way I can look, can look at this in a positive light. Now, how do you get that attitude? You've got to meditate. You can't get it from just talking to a whole lot of people about your problems, Googling what the problem might be and how you correct it, uh, getting going into therapy or whatever. You have to be able to really meditate deeply. Maybe other things will help you, but if the meditation is not there, you can't change your consciousness. You can't get it up to a super conscious level. 
I remember two situations with uh, a couple of my friends. One was, I told this story recently, but it's well worth telling again. Uh, this was my friend, I, I don't think she would mind, Romani. And she, uh, she had a surgery happen and then she was feeling really badly and uh, it, it was lingering. And you know how that, ling that lingering happens sometimes. Oh, I, I still feel bad. Oh, I can't, oh yeah, because you're just in this whirl of heavy energy. And I remember Swamiji said to us once, he was, it's in the Raja Yoga book that um, he got ill in Mexico. He was in South America and he was in a hospital. He had various things and he found out that they, he, they asked him to stay there for two whole weeks. He found out the cost and he said he got well and out of the hospital in two days. He, he just, I'm well now. And so if you really want to get well, you can get well more quickly. So here was my friend, Ramani, and she didn't feel so well. She didn't feel so well. And so finally, Swamiji called her and he says, Ramani, you are well. But she, her energy lifted up and she started feeling well right away and another one of my dearest friends who passed away some years back and i'll end with the story she was a very very dear soul very positive and energetic and willful had a lot of energy and just strong and um she got a, a life-threatening uh disease and she ended up passing away from that disease but when she called Swamiji and told him about it, what the doctors had told her that she didn't have but a year to live, she said, Swamiji said to her the most beautiful words. I keep this in my mind all the time. He said, don't go into the consciousness of the disease. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, he, he would tell us, even if your body's unwell, say, my body's unwell. I'm not unwell. Even if you're feeling, if you're feeling tired, my body's a little tired. It needs rest. I'm not tired, you know. But as soon as you say, "I'm tired," "I'm sick," "I'm worried," "I'm this," "I'm that," well, you're not. That you're putting that over yourself. Your soul is never ill and up, worried and fearful and sick and all of those things. And so then, so anyway, she she did what he said. And she got out and started doing things instead of sitting moping at home, which most people do. Oh, woe is me. I don't have money. I don't have a job. I don't have good health. I don't have a good relationship. I, I don't have my kids aren't happy. I don't have a good school for whatever. She got out and started doing things. She drove around the state, at least several states, and she was ill. She was teaching, she taught affirmations, she taught chanting. She lived one, another year, then another year, and she kept teaching and helping people and serving. She was one of our ministers. Another year passed, another, you know how many years passed by? 10. That woman lived 10 years instead of one because she kept putting out the will and the energy and she changed the karmic situation. And so, uh, how do we do affirmations? We do them in our life, in every part of our life, but we also can do them one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, as an affirmation itself, which we'll do now. Do them when you wake up in the morning, uh, when you go to bed at night, or when you go to bed at night, or before meditation or after meditation. How do you choose an affirmation? I'm going to do one from this wonderful book by Master, Affirmations. Uh, sci scientific healing affirmations. And this beautiful book by Swamiji's Affirmations for Self-Healing. We're going to do the affirmation strongly to wake up the, uh, to get command over the conscious mind and wake it up. We're going to say it then more quietly. We're going to dive deep into the subconscious where there's lingering memories and habits and uh, things that it's like a storage closet, things we want to discard in our mental capacities. And then we're going to lift that energy up to the super conscious level. We're going to plant it on the super conscious level. And just like a groove in a record, we're going to just make, put that in our consciousness so that it will stay there and it will change our thoughts. And so sit up straight and inhale, tense your body. And then exhale, relax. 
hug in. Once more. Good, vibrate, exhale, dump the body. And affirm with me these words of our guru. It's a psychological success affirmation. Say each, each line after me. I am brave. I am strong. I am brave. I am strong. Perfume of success thoughts blows in me, blows in me. I'm cool. I'm calm. I'm sweet. I'm kind. I am love and sympathy. I'm charming and magnetic. I am pleased with all. I wipe away all tears and fears. I have no enemy. I am the friend of all. I am brave, I'm strong. Perfume of success thoughts blows in me, blows in me. I am cool, I'm calm. I'm sweet, I'm kind. I am love and sympathy. I'm charming and magnetic. I'm pleased with all. I wipe away all tears and fears. I have no enemy. I am the friend of all. More quietly, I'm brave, I'm strong. Perfume of success thoughts blows in me, blows in me. I'm cool, I'm calm. I'm sweet, I'm kind. I'm love and sympathy. I'm charming and magnetic. I'm pleased with all. I wipe away all tears and fears. I have no enemy. I am the friend of all. Now mentally, looking deeply up at the spiritual eye, I'm brave, I'm strong. Perfume of success thoughts blows in me, blows in me. I'm cool, I'm calm. I'm sweet, I'm kind. I'm love and sympathy. I'm charming and magnetic. I'm pleased with all. I wipe away all tears and fears. I have no enemy. I am the friend of all. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You can do the affirmations much longer than what I did just now because we ran out of time. But I think you get the feeling, do it strongly, more softly, more softly, more softly, and then mentally gazing deep into the spiritual eye to change your thoughts. I would recommend you do them daily for a while, especially if you're having difficulties with situations in your life or different things like that. I'll ask Natendra to join me on the screen now for a few questions. We'll go a little bit over today, if you can stay. <clears throat> Thank you, Dhyanaji. After such a powerful affirmation, questions kind of weighed away. <laughs> uh, but we'll have just a couple of questions, Dhyanaji. The first one is, how can I be more positive when there are negative people around me? Huh. Yeah, there are negative people. They're everywhere. You can't get away from them. They're at your work. They're in your family. They're your neighbors. They're at the gym. They're everywhere. And so you have to deal with it. You can't change everybody. Change yourself. Get more charming and magnetic yourself. Get more energetic yourself. Get more uplifted. Uh, get a spine. The power should be flowing through your spine. So situations happen and 
I've had many, many, many situations happen that were uncomfortable or I didn't care for them or the person was negative or whatever. And when you get a moment to yourself, then just go out, do a couple of deep breaths, double breathing, walk in place, have some thought revol revolving in your mind, put, put on the music. Um, you've got to use the tools and um, they will help you to keep your energy uplifted. Otherwise, we never change the world. You can't change people. You can change yourself, though. Thank you, Danaji. Uh, the one more thing, be around as much as you can positive people. Make your friends be, make, your, make sure your friends are positive. If your friends are negative, you don't stand a chance. Be with guru bhais. I have this thing I think about. If, if I had a difficult doing that, I called a guru bhai, they would give suggestions. Oh, do this, try this. Oh, I, I just read this from Master. Oh, I, saw, I heard the talk by Swamiji. I'll send you the talk. Oh, let's go for a walk. You talk to somebody who's not a guru by this. Why are you saying to me, I've got my own problems, isn't it? So, so be with people who are uplifting, who are, who've got energy, who've got Shakti, who are happy, who are energetic, who have got ideas, insights, solutions, inspiration. Be with inspired people. Like you, Nitendra, you're an athlete. You, you want to be around people who are, you know, they're positive. They're not couch potatoes. And so <laughs> a devotee should be with people who are on as much as possible on your level, or you're going to feel yourself sinking, sinking down by other people's low vibrations. Thank you, Dhanaji. Maybe we can take one more question. Mm -hmm. This is sometimes bad thoughts come about situations and people, and I cannot help being negative. So what should I do in those situations? Yeah, I know what you mean. All I can say is you got to work at it. You can't hope it's going to go away. And we can't be perfect in one day. So it's directional. That's the point. That's the answer. <clears throat> it's directional. Just try to do better than you did the last time. So this time you feel yourself getting angry and, you know, just try to do a little better than the last time you felt that. And then, oh, my children, they oh, know you're getting emotion. Just try to do a little better. Hold yourself. And the, the, thing you, the thing that works is you have to be centered. How do you get centered? You have to do the practices. There's no way around it. You can't just go online and say, how do I become centered? Oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Master told us how to be centered, how to get out of your emotions, how to be detached, how to be happy, how to be successful, how to be prosperous. He told us everything. You just have to do it yourself. Nobody can do it for you. You can ask that last question if we have the time. Yeah, go for it. Sure, Janaji. It is about the COVID time. So I feel a lot lazy, especially during COVID. And it's hard to get going and be enthusiastic. So what is your advice? <laughs> yeah, I think people's energy has dropped because you're at home. You know, it's nice and cozy, warm. The couch is nice. I have a laptop on my lap. I don't even have to go to the desk. I can turn my camera off and nobody knows I'm actually in the bed at the meeting. And <laughs> you know, energy has gone down. So what do you do about it? You have to pick yourself up. And the way I pick myself up is I exercise a lot. If you don't exercise, you can forget it. And you've just got to get up and get moving, get outside, get some fresh air, open the window at least, march in place. I have a tramp, a little trampoline. It's not a big one. People were worried last time. <laughs> I have a small trampoline. I walk on that. I run on that. I swim when I can swim. I mean, you have to get your energy moving. And, uh, also, um, watch the foods you eat. If you're eating a lot of heavy, greasy foods, good luck. If you're eating a lot of sweets, it just, it just sucks your energy right down. And try doing a little bit of dieting. Get the fat off. And also uh, try doing um, fast, uh, fasting once a week. All these things will help you to shift out of the COVID mode into the the yogi mode you know and as you do these things and i've talked a lot about all the other things and the 
the wonderful books, they're, they're all affirmative that we have. The wonderful music, it's all affirmative. All the chants are affirmative. All you have to do is that put on, if you're feeling like, oh, my energy is going down, I got the music on, Swamiji singing to me, you know? And you'll find, okay, but I don't want to energize. Oh, I'm going to put on I Awaken Thy Light. I'll energize with that because it's, you know, it's got a beat to it. <laughs> and there's so many tricks, but you've got to do them. You can't just expect somebody else to find God for you. It doesn't happen that way. Okay. Happy Republic Day to everybody. God bless you. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank you, Natindra. Bye-bye.